This is Alouette Lake. I'm here today looking at uh, going down the far end where there's a water diversion tunnel. There's a uh, concrete gothic arch denoting where that begins. It's about a kilometer long. It goes from Alouette down to the stave to power generators, power stations down there. And uh, every April, because of the outflow, Migrating smolts headed to the ocean think this is the route to go. Uh, most are entrained or destroyed within the tunnel or within the generators at the far end. We're going to go down there and have a look at it today. I've never been to the far end of the lake, but I'm going to go with my buddy Eric, who's got the boat. And uh, you can come along with us. It's a beautiful lake, and it's going to be a good day for travel. I'm Jack Emberley along the Fraser. Alouette Lake's Banished Salmon, a century-long struggle to come home. Alouette Lake in Golden Ears Park, Maple Ridge, and BC Hydro's Alouette Stave Ruskin System is in the traditional unceded First Nations territory. It was originally two lakes, 17 kilometers long, joined in the Narrows by a stream. Before 1926, Salmon thrived here. Chinook, coho, chum, pink, and sockeye, as well as steelhead, and several non-migratory species of trout and char. Fishermen caught 40-pound Chinook in the Alouette River. This is Jack Everly on the Alouette Lake with my uh, fishing buddy today, Eric. And we've gone to the end. Have a look at the uh, water diversion tunnel. What we're looking at here is the uh, arch indicating the beginning of the water diversion tunnel that goes from this lake to Stave Lake for the purpose of generating hydroelectric power. It's about a kilometer long. Every April the kokanee smolts attempting to reach the sea are encouraged to go through this tunnel because the current is about 10 times more powerful than it is at the dam. And that spells their doom because they're either destroyed within the tunnel or within the uh, turbines in Stave Lake and Hayward Lake. Fish lives didn't matter. The Alloa Dam, built in 1926, blocked access to spawning areas for sockeye and Chinook salmon. Runs were destroyed. The Deputy Minister of Fisheries admitted that would happen and approved the dam's construction anyhow. There were no provisions for the survival of fish above the dam or their importance to the First Nation diet and culture. Today, salmon still can't access the reservoir without being trapped and trucked over the dam. Decade spawned out carcasses were sources of food and nutrients nitrogen and phosphorus for small fish. The dam ended the importation of these nutrients for spawned out carcasses and thusly the growth of phytoplankton and algae that form the fish food base of insects and zooplankton which makes up fish food. Until the 1990s the lake was considered very nutrient poor. BC Hydro funds the lake fertilization program today to support a sports fishery. This replaces some of the lost nutrients due to the damming. The community pleads for fish passage. The Alouette River Salmon Society, First Nations and City of Maple Ridge has repeatedly argued that BC Hydro should fund a fish ladder. Fisheries managers believed salmonids in the Alouette Reservoir were kokanee, a non-migratory species, but genetic work showed they are ocean-going sockeye. They'd return with the opportunity to leave the lake. Previously, fish habitat flows to the lower Alouette River were released at the lower elevation pipe at the base of the dam. But ARMS was able to convince the authorities to experiment by releasing coho smolts over the surface of the spillgate located on the top of the dam. Mm -hmm. 
In 2005, ARMS released 5,000 cohort smelts near Gold Creek to see if they'd move to the river mouth via the dam spillway or stay in the lake. In 2005, we were doing a test with the release of about 10,000 coho from the dam to see if they would survive going over the spillway and into the plunge pool. We had a trap 1.5 kilometers downstream. And 16 hours later, when we looked in the trap, to our amazement, we not only had coho, we had kokanee that had come out. And obviously, they were smolting and therefore, they probably weren't kokanee at all, but sockeye, which had never lost their code. No one knew that the genetic code to outmigrate never died with them. Scientists had told us that they were kokanee, which don't go to sea, but it turns out that they were, and always were, sockeye that were landlocked since 1926. Two years later, in 2007, the first adult sockeye returned to their natal home, the Alouette watershed. Department of Fisheries genetic laboratory tests confirmed they were Alouette River sockeye. It should have been time to celebrate, except one big problem. In 2007, these sockeye came back again. And unfortunately, there was no provisions made, and they had tried to jump above the dam and just landed on the rocks and were thrashing around and died there. Well, six of them died there. I was very upset about this, and I threatened to call the media if we didn't make provisions in the next returning year for these fish. And eventually, that was done. 2008, BC Hydro funded a program, Truck and Transport, to capture, count, and transport returning spawners into the lake. The Alouet Sockeye Adult Enumeration Program, administered by Arms and BC Corrections, to trap at the Alco fish fence, count and move adult salmon into the reservoir during its 14-year history. Its purpose is to assess the feasibility of sockeye being reintroduced to the Alouette Reservoir. Funding by BC Hydro happens on a yearly application basis. In 2020, ARMS celebrated proof of a funding condition, a significant return of spawners to support reintroduction had arrived. 85 sockeye were captured at the Elko Fish Gate. They were transported up Alouette Lake and released to spawn. Clayton maintains that salmon could be reintroduced to Alouette Lake. An environmental report in 2004 that ARMS commissioned concluded the lake could support 65,000 to 68,000 ocean run sockeye again if this species were restored to the Alouette Lake system. The major impediment of recovery of sockeye salmon and other migratory species in the Alouette Reservoir is the entrainment of smolts through the tunnel to a power generation station in the spring when the salmon head to sea. Potentially over 90% of the smolts are lost to production. Rosenose says a return of 85 adults in 2020 is significant if 85 come back in a year like 2020, we could have 10 times that return if the lost production to the Stave Reservoir is rerouted over the Alouette Dam. So a big issue with the Alouette uh, Reservoir restoration of sockeye is that sockeye live above the dam. They need a year of rearing as juveniles and then they go out to sea in the springtime. And so the uh, fish have two options in the Alouette to go either over the dam through the spillway or through the big pipe at the other end, which goes to the power generating station 
and into Stave Lake where we've got Stave Falls and Ruskin generating stations. And so in the springtime, the amount of water going to uh, north effectively through the uh, tunnel to these other generating stations and um, potentially losing the sockeye is uh, up to 90% of the flow and only about 10%, sometimes even less. So what, uh, what I think is that the sockeye smolts are being sucked. They want to go somewhere. They want to go out. They don't want to stay in the reservoir. So I think most of them are getting sucked in the uh, northward direction to the power stations and being ground up or lost in uh, Stave Lake. And uh, only, a, only a five or 10% probably go over the spillway and go out to sea. So it's a big issue. Clayton says BC Hydro's dirty little secret includes a get out of jail pass for killing fish. Section 352 and Section 32 of the Fish Act prohibit harmful alteration, disruption, or destruction of fish, hads, and habitat. Entrainment is the key issue. Entrainment is the diverting of fish into power generation systems via its large pipes, penstocks, or tunnels, which are life-threatening, or moving fish into areas where they never reach the sea. U.S. scientist Richard Brown says pressure in turbines ruptures fish bladders and pops stomachs out of mouths. Some anglers say Big Dolly Varden can be caught at the outlet to Stave Lake, where they feed on mangled and dazed fish exiting the tunnel. Hydro estimates 30% mortality from entrainment, but they haven't done tests because they don't want to bring attention to the issue. Jeff Clayton calls the water diversion tunnel the jaws of hell. One of the big problems here with these smolting sockeye is that there is a tendency for them to go north to the tunnel, get entrained and go out into the stave system. And if they do that, they're going to go through the stave and Ruskin generators and be chewed up into cat food. And in order to survive that, they would have to have the survival skills of Houdini, which I doubt if they have. So we have to find a way to deal with the entrainment. BC Hydro says it's maybe 30%, but we don't know. It may be 90, it may be 10, but we've got to do these tests and we've taken far too long. So to prevent entrainment, it's pretty simple. You just shut off the tunnel at the north end of the lake during the springtime when the smolts are migrating and uh, they either have to stay in the lake or go south through over the dam and into the river. So um, we, can, we, know we, can, we know that BC Hydro can do that for six weeks that they are migrating out of the reservoir. A proposed hatchery isn't a solution. 2020, BC Hydro offered $100,000 for an egg to smolt sockeye hatchery. The offer hasn't been accepted. I don't support a hatchery on the Alouette River for sockeye because I think it basically will do absolutely nothing. First of all, you got to deal with the issue of entrainment, but secondly, the amount of resources that Hydro is prepared to put into the, into the hatchery is so tiny relative to what the historical run would have been, probably easily 50,000 fish, that the number of fish coming back would, it's been estimated less than a couple hundred fish. So basically, a hatchery is a waste of time and resources. The right action for the Alouette Salmonoid. Both Clayton and Rosano say that thousands of sockeye smolts could be saved if the water diversion tunnel was shut down during their peak out migration time, six weeks from April to May. But it would only be part of the solution to restore salmon into the Alouette Reservoir. The adult fish will still need a fishway to get into the lake. The goal of BC government's Salmon Restoration Fund for research and fish is to make wild fisheries more sustainable for the long term. 2020 was the worst year in history for the Fraser River sockeye returns. A mere 283,000 fish returned compared to 28 million in 2010. Government spent 
60 million to help them get past the big bar landslide near Lillooet. In 2010, a fish ladder over Alouette Dam was costed at $4 million. Jeff Clayton says stated government support of wild salmon would be advanced by reintroducing them to Alouette Lake Reservoir. ARMS has identified numerous ideal locations for sockeye to spawn throughout the lake. 11 years of adult returns, along with the continued smolt migration, lend support to the feasibility that South Alouette River sockeye could be re-established. The Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program, 2018. back at this end now where we came in and uh, Eric's been hooking the fish so we're going to spend a few minutes here before we wrap up the day but it's been a great day so we'll talk to you later. Jack Kimberly, along the Fraser. <laughs>